Now that is the money she made from twerking on a handstand. And this is the next track recap. We gonna get to the bottom of this bitch. So the movie begins where all good movies do, and that's at 3 a.m. in the back room of a strip club where we got Big Daddy telling our girl Cinnamon that she needs to go work the champagne room. She don't want to, but he's like, yo, the old times in there got to stack this stick, go get it. But instead, our girl Cherry Bomb's like, yo, I'll cover it for a Big Daddy. She gets to work, and then one of the members of the straight clown clique signals the other to pay off the bouncer and he gets lost she's working on the only outsider which is the brother first and then out of nowhere we cut to her in the hospital and she's beat bad she's asking for her brother but sister soul's like yo i don't even know who that is i gotta go so she heads out and we cut to a scene of this guy popping from the newspaper and it's her brother we get uh, some flashbacks of what partially had happened and she starts giving up names. The Jake is all listening and saying, is asking her if she's sure because these are some high profile guys that own big business and big money. And she's like, yeah, the only one I didn't know was the brother, but uh, you know, he didn't really do nothing. So these two members of the clown clique show up to the brother's house and they get to threaten him like, yo, you better tell them that we didn't do nothing. Or we're going to add some blue to that black ass of yours. You hear, boy? And then we cut back to the detective visiting Cherry Bomb again and telling her that she lied and that their, her statement did not add up and that they had an alibi and told her that she could be charged for that and he's going to be keeping an eye out for her. But her bro goes and visits one of the clowns because they went to high school together and picks out a weapon because he's going to let him know what's up. Clown calls him in like, yo, step in. What you want? And he's like, you know what? I had nothing to do with your sister. And she been a host since day one, Tatiana. And then he goes to pull the piece on him. But before he can, Psycho Chick come out and tries to give him the battery. He takes it from her locks the door and then clown batter ups himself swings in a miss his little psycho chick jumps on his back they bust through the fake wall into the laboratory and when he comes in he catches one but tells him he's going to throw the d into the fan and does which od's psycho chick and while he's going over there he re gets his step back and then next thing you know clown starts swinging away only to catch hot lead don't bring it back to a gunfight but if you win make sure you skip up some of that loot you feel me so he grabs it slides over and now we in the club later that night and cherry bomb got out the hospital and she tracked down one of the guys in disguise showed her her eyes and then she's like, surprise, don't fuck with a stripper. And gives him the old curvature with the blade, sticks him with the ox and he's done. Then we cut to uh, Bushido Blade, who's on an assassin run, but has just been called in for uh, a new contract. But first he has to finish up the one he's on. And he goes in and takes out this old Chuck Norris dude and then takes out his buddy as well, but lets this guy live. Yo, bro goes and sees his sis to make sure she's okay and that he heard about what happened to Clown 2 at the club. And there goes Cinnamon. And she said she's not going to stop till they all dead and gone. And then bro's like, okay, I'll help. And now they're all happy. But they're like, yo, we need a plan and we need weapons. So they go see Cinnamon's man. And he's going to hook him up with the money that bro got they're gonna buy one of every dang thing he's got they about to be strapped tight wrapped tight and she's like he should have never messed with a stripper bitch and he's like yo that turns me on a little bit and she's like oh yeah turns me on too so then clown boy number three is in his high profile meeting and out of nowhere he gets called away uh to answer the phone something to do with his kids school so he leaves and his boss is meeting with the potential client and they're going over the particulars making sure everything's on the up and up and that they have the same kind of values feel me and uh then this you know the assistant comes back and tells him that some lady's here to see him and she barges in come 
Once again, it's Cherry Bomb in disguise, giving her superpowers of the stripper code and starts to, to mess things up, saying that uh, Clown 3 was the one that sent her. So he gets fired. And when he gets home, his wife is kind of tripping and then pulls the actual whammy card on him like, yo, you did this, we're done. We're done. You'll never see your kids again. And then he's kind of tripping about it and here's the voicemail left by her and was like, yo, check in your, in, your, in your drawers. He finds the young Strig and he's like, there's only one thing to do, self-termination. And she's out enjoying every minute of her, but her bro's like, yo, we can't, we can't be doing this mind fuckery. Like we just gotta kill him. And then out of nowhere, Bushido Blade shows up, but they don't know who he is and he walks by so they think they're cool. But he, of course, doubles back and literally pulls bro out the car to give him a nice little beating. You know what I mean? Puts it on him. Cherry Bomb tries to hit him with a wrench like he isn't the Black Terminator. And she gets choked up a little bit and then, you know, gave her the Undertaker throw. But he gets hit by the car and then just gets up and then he writes their names in his death note. It's fucking crazy. And they're all excited. So now they're going to go straight out military sniper mode. She got the long barrel and she's about to take out Bruh, but then she misses. And out of nowhere, while his family's coming over there to play ball, she pops up, kicks down the fence like she's Sarah Connor, you know, you know, cocks back and then she's about to lay him down as he runs away, catches a couple to the leg bones. And he's like, I didn't do nothing to you, shorty. Why are you doing this to me? And she's like, you could have stopped him. You could have saved me, motherfucker. What's your problem, man? You just filmed it and then put it on TikTok. So she goes home, her brother drops her off, and Bushido Blade is literally there waiting for her, about to give her the old one and done, but her brother saves her, and they get out of there, and he's like, yeah, that's his car right there, he a text boy. So then they go hang out with Cinnamon and ask her man to protect him, and he's like, yeah, I've been waiting to use this motherfucking shotgun, it's about to get lit. So he's out there sipping on the old fashioned, you know what I mean? And uh, then Cherry Bomb wakes up, realize she fell asleep. She nervous, so she alerts Bro Bro. And then they start looking around, seeing what's going on. And out of nowhere, Cinnamon's man gets linked up into the door, done for the day. And uh, in comes the Black Terminator, picks up Cinnamon, and uh, about to lay her down and does it anyways. She starts shooting at him but realizes that this is a movie and you know, Black Terminator can't die yet. Even though she hit her with hit him with the pole, still missed. He pushed her down and got out of there somehow. But that's what Black Terminators do. So the next morning they're hanging out trying to come up with a plan to leave and get away. Next thing you know, sniped, spot him, got him. Come around the corner looking like Knight Rider from way, way, way back. And uh, she's trying to drive. We get a nice, cool little high speed chase. She starts dumping out uh, the window with the Uzi. Then she does some more Fast and Furious stuff, whips about, standing out there waiting for him. And she ends up clipping his arm, but not doing enough damage. And he, he, he skeet skirts out of there. And so does her brother in the heaven. Then we cut to find out that Big Daddy was the one that actually had hired Bushido Blade and now Cherry Bomb is around the club setting up Home Alones and uh, they're all walking around trying to find her and she's doing sneaky stuff. She tricked Big Daddy into the big room and locked him in there for a sec. Then she goes to meet up with Bushido Blade and does some military combo stuff and unloads his firearm and then starts chucking glasses at him and he's able to block him but he's still on the move he comes out gets tricked and then they get into some old UFC real quick but of course he gets the better of her it's all because of the afro then he does a little monologue and she sets him up to hit one of the booby track takes the shotgun to the leg she hops in a whip and now she's about to go twisted metal on his ass and does then she pops out and it's up to the final boss now she comes in and big daddy acting like straight up vince mcmahon you know like he's setting up the royal rumble then she's asking how could you do this to me to cinnamon and he's like, yo, I was gonna do something, but yo, them clowns make me too much money because I'm the kingpin and you make me a couple dollars a night. 
So I knew you was expendable. She's like, well, happy Independence Day, motherfucker. And he takes the pyros and the fireworks to the face. She, for some stupid reason, rolls him over. And for her troubles, he gets, she gets the lame choke slam until she go ahead and pops him in the pipeline. Ouch. Then gives him another pick to the stick. And uh, next thing you know, the cops try to show up and arrest her. But she's got some evidence to make sure they don't mess with her. And she walks out into the sunset. And that's the whole freaking movie. Sup?